Jake, before we get started here, I'd like to propose a toast. Hold on. No, it's casual. Jake. Yeah. Now it's not casual <laughs> because you said that it was casual. I would like to propose a toast. I would like to finally hear the toast. It's to a, a favorite web series of mine. Dr. Horrible. Oh, okay. <laughs> to Dr. Horrible. Love it. We are the... Platoon. Of power. Squadron. So Pops started actually, I think Carl and Jake and I are the beginning of Pops. Like the three yeah. of us together. So... It's originally, of course, Jake's concept, but at that time, like we were hanging out heavily and we had a very small production that we called 10 till 1 because we primarily hung out from 10 p.m. to 1 in the morning. Which is the only time that we're able to when you have full-time jobs. It happens from 10 till 1. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we made a few things under that, but this was a concept that uh, happened at that time. And I was brought into it because I knew you mm -hmm at school. Yeah. We went to college together. From there, I met Jake. I lived with Carlin in a house in the north side of the city. Carlin and her then boyfriend, Ty. He was a very regular guy. We spent a lot of time in this house and we did a couple other series together about plant nurseries and stuff like that. And then I was like, okay, none of this is getting us any attention. What's hot? It was like right when Iron Man was coming out, the first Iron Man. And I was like, superheroes. I love Smallville. I could do a superhero show, yeah. except the superhero. Hardly any, hardly anyone <laughs> does superheroes. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, so I asked each of them, Eliza, Ty, and Carlin. I was like, I want you to think of a character. What power do you want? And then I'll tell you if I can accomplish it, visual effects wise. And then you name your character. I want a superhero name and a regular name. So, everybody named their characters and their superhero names, except Ty named him Donald, cause be because specifically in the first episode, he wanted Jonas to go, damn it, Donald. <laughs> That's the only reason. And he wanted to be Mr. Dr. Electricot. For episode five on the sign-in sheet, I said, everybody gets to come up with their last name. Do you remember Donald's no. last name? Do you? Yes. I don't remember. You came up with it. I know, but I don't remember what it is. Kincaid. Kincaid. <laughs> Donald Kincaid, that's yeah, right. Yeah. That's his name. And yeah. of course, it's Jonas King, because I'm yeah. a Stephen King fan. Well, hey, do you want to know how I learned about Platoon of Power Squadron? How? I... I'm curious. Yeah? Do you remember this story accurately? I don't. Well, <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, you asked me to be in it, and I said yes. No. Do you remember what you actually said? Uh, yeah, I could do that for a weekend. No. Well, yeah, that actually, you, you did say that. But I said, would you like to do this? And you said, yeah, is, it, is there any money? Did I say that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I said, I said, oh, no, actually, we don't have any money. And you were like, I'll do it. <laughs> All right, gang. We're going to break into this house and recover a priceless artifact. Two, you're on lookout. Three, check all the doors and windows for a way to get in. Well, I do the hardest part of all. Got it. Nice! Right before we started writing the entire show, um, Tim Farron, <coughs> his producer, Ryan Wolf, producer, cinematographer, and I sat in uh, Ryan's backyard and planned out the 10 episodes of the show. And they were each going to be a 10 minute episode. And it was this whole thing about, and Damon was going to start a fast food chain and start putting pieces of himself into burgers, and he would start to consume people from the inside, which is a cool kind of thing. That's but really it messed up. It didn't end up being the right thing, and yeah. the entire trajectory of Pops changed. However, I always knew that the entire thing was going to be an origin story. Like, they were never going to be a fully formed team until the last couple minutes. I think, the, I think the funny thing, though, is the idea for the Mediocre Team happened around the same time as the idea for Pops. I think it probably did. So it's going to yeah. be like a spin-off series or something like right. that. Right. It should still be. Uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of potential there. Um, I think I found Pops because um, I wasn't doing anything that weekend. Uh, <laughs> <so>. <laughs> <laughs> like, right. back That's... when we filmed the whole episode in two days, you know, I was just like, oh, okay, I'll, I guess I'll help, uh, help out on this project. Uh -huh. Sure, why not? And... Um, 
yeah, that's that's. The rest of I think that's how it started for a lot of people. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, hey, we hold the boom mic for this one day, and then it's like, oh yeah, can you come back every single day for the next five years? Yeah, yeah, that, that yeah. Was, yeah. Tell me about it. Everything about the approach changed as we went on, and the show kind of got less goofy. The first couple episodes are real goofy. I was dreaming about pizza too. Your spicy like pepperoni. You like my sauce. Do the pizza thing. Do the pizza thing. The ingredients have got to be fresh. I'll eat. You're pregnant. Yay! And I took pentameter outside for the funeral. <laughs> Even though some of, like there's a lot of humor that still remains, you can tell that the tone of the show changed like three on. The biggest influences for the Pachina Power Squadron, I know exactly because I was watching them in the video store I was working when I wrote episode one. Obviously, Smallville, I talk about it in the first episode. I say I'm watching, Jonas is watching Smallville. The only parallel you can draw with Lost is that the audience doesn't know a lot over the first few episodes. You don't actually know what Jonas can do until episode five. So like, you know there are superpowers, but you don't know what people can do or how they end up living in an apartment together or if there are other superpowers. Like those elements, I didn't explain because I was watching Lost. Uh, those were the two biggest. Cinematography wise, I think it's just everything I've ever watched. Yeah. Kind of looks like pops. <laughs> in the very beginning, I mean, we, Jake had an idea of what this character was, how they're going to be in the storyline, but also how they're going to evolve throughout the entire series. But from there, from that starting off point, I mean, I think each of us really found our own personality in the characters. Yeah. This is one of the reasons why we would have the cast and crew reading, just to hear the cadence of the script aloud, but also that's a time when Jake would create one or two drafts with my feedback, but then to get the whole team and group in there so that they could kind of troubleshoot anything that didn't end up quite working in the mm -hmm. group as well. And then I, there were several times when I had very, very strong reactions about things that I don't think Virginia would do. And Jake might disagree, but I would require him to like have the conversation with me. He needed yeah, to have justify that. Craig, what would you say my first reaction is to any note you give me about the show? Uh, you disagree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, no, no, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Like, and, and about everything, too. Like, I, this is, the I think the, the, almost every time I'll, if it, I'll give a note, you'll disagree, and then you'll come back and agree later. Yeah. Like, well, like days I need, later. I need time to process it. Yeah. Right? I need, well, on the set, I'm better, because they're small suggestions. Yeah. Bigger suggestions that involve, like, rewrites. Yeah. Take me time to process because of how hard writing is in the first place. There were a couple scenes that were in the draft that we would go through in the read through and everybody would collectively feel that a particular scene was too far uh, what's outside of the mood of the rest of the series right, yeah. essentially so we would kind of work together to get it a little more in line essentially originally in episode nine jonas was being bullied in the classroom and he lost control and he ashed his entire classroom and then the teacher freaked out and started to run for the door, and Jonas ashed that guy on purpose. That was one of the it. things we thought was too far. <laughs> so, like, then they would pair me back, then I would do another draft, and then I would start scheduling. That is the hardest thing to do, sit down and schedule. Break down all the scenes, write them on a list, schedule them out on a calendar, send them out to people, get people's conflicts back, reschedule, get ready for production. And from there on, it's just like race to get ready, shoot day. <sighs> Got it. Make sure it's backed up on two hard drives. Race to get ready for the next shoot day. That was logistically hard, but emotionally hard was always getting everybody together. Because anytime a conflict arose, <laughs> I would have automatically think, well, nobody cares about this. Let's just, let's stop. I yeah. totally almost quit uh, in the episode six, seven divide. I told Eliza if it was going to continue, somebody else would have to uh, direct and produce it. I would continue to write the show, but I wouldn't do any other stuff anymore. Yeah. Well, you didn't end up doing that. No. She waited a couple of days and asked me again, and I was fine. Yeah. Yeah. As the show went on, life kind of like paralleled. Like, the show 
kind of started to parallel life things. Donald was the only one who quit his job to pursue his dream. Yeah. Everyone else was still working their day jobs and doing superpowers as a hobby. Yeah. And then uh, Jonas kept trying to convince himself to quit because it was too much stress <laughs> to, yeah. to do all this as a hobby. I help people every day by just sitting in my room watching movies and trying to forget about what I can do. We ended up taking on so many different roles as a result of it, like being part of the creation team. So um, when I saw Jake struggling with uh, the producing responsibilities, he's amazing at almost every other aspect of filmmaking, but producing is just not fun for him. I hate producing, hate producing. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of stepped up and started taking some of those and you did a lot of costume work and a lot more of like whatever it was asked and you did yeah. the props and if something needed to be done that Jake was just too busy for or just needed help with people would always step up. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is just showing up, right? Yeah, yeah. actually, every I mean, day is different. So just show up, and then yeah. you'll find out what you're going to do. Honestly, I think that's, idea. like, one of the hardest aspects of production is just getting everybody to show up on the same day and oh, same time, yeah. which is yeah. something I didn't know when we started this show, and oh. but I've learned to appreciate. <laughs> that is the hardest, and it's always the hardest part. All right, Chacho Hancho, what's the plan, Art? Why can I never understand you? Are we going after Electricon? If our time with this woman has proven anything, it's that a bunch of career financiers doesn't make a good brute squad. You're not ready to fight the Electricon, but you will be. I found somebody who's gonna teach you how to fight. I um, used to live in Lake Bluff where there was a little video store where Jake worked. And he was, I don't know, 16, 17, I don't know, we would go in there and I would rent movies and we would, I never left in less than an hour. We'd talk about movies, all you know, all the stuff. And he said, "You know, do you mind if I show you something I'm working on?" And this was some other thing that he had done a long time ago, and you could totally see the potential. And I said, "You know, what would really bump this up is some music. Let me do music for you." He's like, "Oh, we don't have a budget," and I'm just like, "Whatever." So I started doing music for some of his little pieces here and there. And then uh, when this came up, he said, "We're looking for a bad guy." super villain or whatever and I said <laughs> I said I will no longer do music if you don't let me audition for this you know I was just being like you know like right. you know joking but and he said uh, he's like what we would love to have you you've got the role I had just stumbled upon a a meet group the Chicago film meet group there were some comments in this posting regarding this audition because apparently this web series had already developed quite a following. So I submitted myself for the audition for the role of Ricky, which I didn't originally get cast as. Jake calls me up and says that the guy they originally cast uh, couldn't do it for whatever reason and then offered it to me and I ecstatically said yes. <laughs> and um, yeah. You've been working out? Yeah. I've really been paying attention to villain crews in action movies. The strongest henchman seems to last the longest. Huh. I keep telling myself I'm gonna get to the gym, but you can't build a bridge out of good intentions, right? Yeah, well, if you're not the strongest, you're gonna have a special skill like knife throwing or metal teeth or speaking German. I'm on it! How did I find, find Pops? It actually kind of found me. I've known Jake for probably longer than I've actually known myself. So mm -hmm. he needed somebody that allegedly had muscle for episode two, I believe it was. It was me and Marshall and it was like the first fight scene with Craig. And he just called me up, was like, hey, do you want to be in this web series? I've been a part of it ever since. How did I find Pops? Yeah. It was a uh, audition notice on Craigslist, and I went to a place called Gorilla Tango and auditioned for Jake and Eliza and Chris, I believe. John Crossweight. I was going to school with him at the time. We did stage combat together quite a bit, and he was like, hey, I'm on this web series, and they need people that can fight. And I was like, yeah, I can fight. I did a Skype audition with Jake, and I was cast. I'm a pretty kind of quiet guy I'm also business is my life so I mean outside I'm not an actor so like as, as a business person which was kind of the persona of Carl as we started to really get into the series 
Yeah, the way I prepped for Precious was actually, I listened to a lot of ridiculous rap music that I wouldn't normally listen to. Kind of follow like the dialogue and try to fit into the sort of yo guy that Jake was always telling me that Precious was. Precious on set just kicking it with Dr. Touchlight over here. I don't know what you just said, but if you, uh, I agree. <laughs> Swade, he started referring to himself as Uncle Damon. And I was like, it's Precious's uncle. That's why he's here. Like, that's what this connection is. And I, I still call him Uncle Damon sometimes, like in a text or, you yeah. know. There wasn't a lot of preparation. It was mostly just kind of like what felt right. Yeah. While, while we were in the, the heat of filming. A lot of it was just like double check the lines. And I didn't want to be the guy that was like, oh, shit. what's my line? Sorry. Because like yeah. the one thing that Jake asked was like, please don't let lines become a thing. Yeah. So we should make this clear. He's a real actor. I'm like a guy they let kind of go along with this thing. Um, I try. In the dinner scene, so the painting was done by my younger brother, uh, Jeff Stout, and it was supposed to be me as Hamlet. It was from back when I was thinking, oh, wouldn't it be fun to be an actor before I got into music? And I would just do it. It would be wrong. <laughs> Jake would be like, no, don't do it. No, no. <laughs> Clearly. But don't worry. I have a plan. <laughs> I like being fr pretending to be frustrated. I like that. Me too, actually. Yeah. Like if you notice Jonas, he like he's he's always kind of grumpy and gruff and he's kind of a dick. Like yeah. that I like playing that character. I think yeah. it's because um I mean, I grew up in the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> Angsty. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's what Jonas is about. With Donald, it's not like whatever, but it, but he gets he gets annoyed when things don't go his way. Even like up until cameras rolling and action, then all of a sudden I'd figure out how to do it and what I was supposed to be doing. I feel like any prep beforehand, it wasn't the same. It was just going through the motions, but you weren't in character yet. When I did memorize my lines beforehand, I found it much harder to adjust to directing notes because mm -hmm. I'd get too stuck in the way that I perceived it. And the beats that you had yeah. already set in motion. Yeah. yeah, so it was actually, I mean, it's, it's, it's weird to say this, but it was easier to figure that out on the night. I can't believe you tricked us like that. There wasn't even a John Hughes party. I knew it, you did time travel. Oh, just for a second, I just wanted to be sure. It was only a peek. Yeah, well, all I needed was a peek into Ryan Gosling's shower, but no, you don't want Let's to. Let's do a task here. We need to get the statue back to the old guy. You probably don't need to put them on well. What you got, what you got going on there, Tim? Let's, let's set them up right now. Box of rocks. Oh, rocks. The apostrophe is on the wrong side. side. It's for sandbagging the lights. The box of rocks goes in shoe bags, right? You got it, yeah. And then the shoe bags go on the light stands so the lights don't fall over when it gets windy. We all know that sand used to be rocks, so we're just one step ahead of them. Or, <laughs> with every episode we had like our little Stupid inside joke. Nine. Nine? Or catchphrase or something. Stupid? Uh, really well thought out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very clever uh, inside joke. The earliest one I can remember is Chouch. 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 <laughs> For the fight sequence right. in the first episode, we moved all the furniture out to have Craig and Jake fight over the slice of pizza. I don't know, it was late at night and somebody said, hey, don't forget about the Chouch, or I don't know what the heck it was. <laughs> yeah. We had to walk on the couch to right. get down the hallway, though. One of the things was that we would say a lot was is Howard the Ducket or I, I'm going to Howard the Ducket. Jake would say certain things like, hey, like Jurassic Park that or <laughs> just something that was like iconic yeah. that happened in that movie that you're trying to emulate. Or can you Smallville that? Smallville that, yeah. have the lights out of focus in the background. Correct, yeah. yeah. Right. And yeah. so then somehow it would just became a joke where we said more and more ridiculous things into Howard the Duck. And you can only Howard the Duck that. Howard no, come the on. Duck it. Right. Like, Taking a stool was another one. Taking a stool. Taking a stool. <laughs> 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 right? It's like taking a chair, except... You just gotta do it without any actual support. You uh -huh. just have to sort of just take a stool. Like, wherever you are, well, just sit down, sort of. Yeah. yeah, well, actually, the original stool was, was Tim. It's me, yeah. yes. For uh, episode... I think it was two, two, right? I needed to steady the shot a little bit. Shooting through a car window, I Yeah, think, oh, that's right. right. I had to get real low. Okay. And you needed to display your dominance. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. I, I just, I had to remind Tim. <laughs> every day. Every so there's a pecking order, you know. Yeah. It's like, we always had like a boom operator There was always a boom operator. Yeah. yeah. I love it in post too. Like anytime I'm watching the 
the bloopers and like something funny will happen on screen and then I'll hear Ryan's laugh like off screen and I'm just like because it's so good there's nothing like that no it's, it's unique there were there were a few rough T- times, yeah. It, wasn't, it was never terrible, but there were there were a few rough shoot days right. that stick out in my mind when we were maybe overscheduled. The hardest part was the um, very cold shoots. Cold, so cold. And the cold. I thought I was gonna die of hypothermia. <laughs> I was so cold. We we shot yeah. outside in the freezing cold a lot for this show. It's just yeah. the way that the production schedule lined up. For some reason, we were always shooting on that cycle. One of the things I love absolutely the most is when we tackle a technically difficult shot and whenever we get that that just feels so good there's one where we start underneath the table pulling away then craning up so we had the dolly and a crane on the dolly and one person for the dolly one person like two people for the crane ryan and then somebody to catch ryan and or the camera (laughs) (laughs) and like that took some work. In moments like that, it's all hands on deck. No matter how little experience you have, you like, we're going to give you something to do. Mm-hmm. And I can't, we've had, we've taught so many people how sound equipment works. And oh, we've God. taught Boom so operator. many people who I'm sure will never operate sound again in their life. Definitely one of my favorite effect sequences in the show, which is one that I worked on, is the lightning whip effect. You because remember every second of it. I remember every it. second of it because yeah. it took me like well over a hundred hours probably. So it was all done in After Effects. It has some 3D capabilities, but it's not what the program's designed for. The lightning whip itself is actually composed of a series of two-dimensional lightning segments that move closer or further away from camera. So I basically just had to go through frame by frame, move the segments kind of around in 3D space where I thought they should be, and then kind of blend them together. It just took a while. That (laughs) shot's gonna look really great though when Jake releases Pops 3D. That's gonna blow the audience. Like, oh, are we not allowed to talk about that yet? That would be too soon. (laughs) The one that I always come back to thinking is like incredibly difficult is in episode seven when Donald and Jonas go down into the basement where there's those three guys who have the three girls locked up. We had a bunch of new people that day who did not understand the scope of what they were signing on to. That entire sequence we did in one day. From getting down there, there was a lot of effects. We hung that light from your back. It was like hanging by your neck yeah. so that you would shine light behind you as you walk. We had so many people and I thought we were gonna be done in six hours, and it ended up taking like 10 to 12 hours. I got really sick the next day. Yeah, because that the, basement was yeah. like full of mold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so people were troopers about it, but I felt like I was losing my mind. Finally got it, and we went upstairs and had a beer at the Honky Tonk. After a really hard shoot day, there's never a better beer. Oh yeah. <laughs> that is the best a beer gets. Yeah, it tastes like, it, it's like you're drinking water, like it's replenishing you in some way, even though it's bad for you. Yeah. But it just feels like you're, you're, you're drinking a magic elixir. That's a few beers, how you feeling? Handsome. Light it up. Beer is a go. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> The meth lab apartment days. Oh yeah. That was fun. Those were great. That was a lot of fun. We got to do some cool stuff. Because we got to shoot actual glass with uh, BB BB guns. guns. But those were good days too because we knew we had the space for as long as we needed and that is always so relieving. And then we got to blow it up when we were done. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. that and the warehouse were the two closest thing to having a soundstage. Right. Yeah, we would just go there, we would just set up, (laughs) we would leave stuff if we had to. We had our settings like, okay, cool, we're in this shot, we're gonna do these kind of lights. So for any aspiring web series directors, if if your web series can take place in an abandoned warehouse or an empty apartment. Yes. uh, you have access and to you have access to it and you happen to know the landlord yeah, yeah. then yeah great do that <laughs> yeah. right. uh good right. days were when uh jake bought dinner and then drinks after shooting yeah. right yeah that yes. one day was great yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was good. i just i i really like all of the times like in between things and the just the moments of camaraderie i always knew who i was going to be working with and i was mm-hmm. always like excited to see everyone and it was just a good environment always we did more adr this week Here's some ADR. Carlin, what's your favorite part about being in Pops? Um, 
being cool. It's not it's not sitting on my sitting roof when it's roof. cold. <laughs> it's not actually cold. I just I feel like this is appropriate. You look totally thug life right now. I, that's what I mean by appropriate. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to have to Maybe hold this. Maybe charming. Let me check check. Check check check. Love it. Louder. Yeah, I think so. My voice doesn't carry well. What do you want me to do? Come on, you're a freaking punk singer. I know. All right. No butt crack, please. <laughs> that was harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll be all right. Okay, cool. Craig? Yeah? Is this just the most professional, like, setup for dialogue replacement you could imagine? I feel like this is what Francis Ford Coppola and, uh... Spielberg, that's, this is the kind of thing they did in the 70s, yeah. while on drugs. We're not doing drugs, though. This show has taught me so much. This yeah. show has taught me everything about actually producing something, and about managing a ton of different schedules, and trying to make it work for everybody, and how to maximize your time, and how to like really plan a shoot day, and then you gotta feed people too. Once we started kickstarting stuff, then we started, people actually started getting fed. Food. And a little bit of payment was involved yeah. as well. Joss Whedon said, um, writing is the act of creation, directing is the act of compromise. And that yeah. is 100% true. Oh yeah. Like you get in there and nothing will work until it works. Now the thing that's really amazing to me though is that you know we shot the first episode in February of 2008. Things always take three times longer than mm -hmm. you think they yep. will. Like here we are, it's 2017. It's really remarkable that like Everyone stuck Everybody with it. wanted to see yeah. it through, you yeah. know. Yeah. It's a testament to, you know, to the show and just the dedication, I think. It's yeah. pretty remarkable. I've never been a part of anything, you know, like that that's lasted yeah, that long. No, me neither. Jake made a product that made us all want to show up. But yeah, well, it helps thing, that the show is, is really awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah and all so. the cocaine they provide. <laughs> yeah. The crowdfunding. The crowdfunding. Exactly. Crowd yeah. yeah. right. So how were your four days? Pretty good. Buried Donald. Had some pizza. Oh, you're just wanting pizza. This thing has pizza, beer, pizza, dubstep, indie rock, 80s nostalgia dance party with tacos, sushi, foam room, batting cages, maybe anime. Can we go? I just got home. I've been hoboing through time for days. It's free. Yeah, okay. The best part about it was definitely hanging out with the crew. I mean, like, yeah. we just get along so well. It's just like, yeah. it's just a blast. I mean, it was a blast. I mean, we just had a blast. So yeah, when Jake killed me off on the end of nine, I was really bummed. <laughs> oh. I really enjoyed doing Max. Me too. Okay, good. <laughs> it was a great eight years. It was, yeah, yeah it, was, it was a really great eight years. And um, as much as I'm gonna miss it, I'm just so glad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so happy it's over. <laughs> well, I'm so glad like in a couple months, I won't be getting an email and be like, all right, here's our calendar for the next episode. Like We start like, shooting yeah. in January. Yeah. 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 yeah, It's a night shoot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna miss it a little bit, I guess. But no, I think thank God it. it's yeah. over now. But thank God it's over. <laughs> yeah. So we're here to announce our new web series we're starting. <laughs> <laughs> I think Pops is way more way better, way b bigger than I ever could have anticipated and brought me more personal fulfillment and joy than I thought it ever was going to. The way that people, the interaction happens as the episodes unspool, reading all the comments, and not just about the show, people are debating about what the characters would and wouldn't do, and that means they're real to them, and that is amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. They, people, people treat it like I treat the shows I love. And yeah. that is something that is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>